Licat volaris in super terbum aquila volat. Licat volaris in super terbum aquila volat. Serious trouble. Oh, come on, it's only a flag. It's not only a flag, Jeff. Neil Armstrong put that flag on the moon. If the Americans ever find out we took it... Nobody's going to find out, are they? I can't. You hope. There's gonna be enough trouble when they realise you smudged that footprint. I just wanted a little souvenir. You took one. I took a rock. Oh, that's all right, is it? Taking a rock. Of course it is. It's completely different. I'm sorry. As far as I can see, they were both just lying around. the moon. What in? It's a life pod from an Irillian battle cruiser. It crashed to Earth 6,000 years ago. They found it in a hole in the ground. Mrs. Murray. And I'm the one who told them to keep it a secret. I know it was wrong, but they were having such a good time, you see. I thought they were supposed to be cleaning out your loft. I know. But they went to the moon instead. I should never have let them go. It's all my fault. I should never have let them go. You better bring that in if you want to keep it. The flag. It'll burn up on re-entry if you don't. Oh, right. Oh, hang on. It'll be cold. Sorry. Can we go a bit faster, please? Why? I need the toilet. I said you should have gone on the moon. They don't always go to the moon, of course. No. I mean, that's the wonderful thing. They can go anywhere they want. It's just that Tom likes the moon because of the rocks. Yes. So how do they breathe? I beg your pardon? In space. How do they get in the air? Sal? No. No, I'm interested. Well, there's a force field, you see. You press one of the buttons, I think it's the yellow one, on the dash, and this energy field comes up that keeps all the air in, but everything else out. Goodness. The trouble is, while it's on, the oxygen recycler only gives them enough fresh air for about six hours, and... Well, they left at ten o'clock, and it's gone for, so... They may be up there with nothing to breathe. Now, now, Mrs. Murray, <laughs> I'm sure they'll manage. I make it 20 past three. What? But I thought it was... The clock's changed on Sunday, remember? We went back an hour. Oh! Oh, oh dear! Which means the boys are probably on their way home now. Yes. I hope they remembered to get your shopping. I expect when they've landed their little spaceship, they'll come straight over. They could still be back by four, don't you think? Yes. I suppose they could. I think I might start collecting flags. Buckingham Palace, the White House. We could fly around and get them all from the main state buildings of the world. I've always got a flag, haven't I? And all we have to do... What's this? Ah. You didn't post it? I forgot. It's his birthday today, Jeff. 
I know. It doesn't matter. I always forget his birthday. He's used to it. Oh, and that makes it all right, does it? Tom, how do you feel if it was your birthday? There's no present and your dad comes along two days later and says, Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to post it. Well, go on, how would you feel? Look, I made a mistake. There's not much I can do about it, is there? I can't exactly fly over to Paris and leave it on his desk and... <sighs> all right, all right. We'll take Mrs. Mario shopping and then we'll take Daddy as present. Thank you. But we'll probably have to pick up Austin first. This guy. This guy. Okay. He's the birthday present, is he? Jack's always wanted a dog. And now he's officially old, I'm giving him Oscar, a walking stick, and one of those suede cardigan things that zip up the front. Oh, that's wonderful. Just the candles to put on. Oh, thank you. It's fantastic. And he doesn't know anything about it? Not a thing. I rang Paris at lunchtime and spoke to his secretary. Nobody's phoned him, nobody sent a card. Everyone's pretending they don't know it's his birthday. He thinks he's been completely forgotten. I wish I could see his face. You're sure he won't mind? Mind? Of course he'll mind. He'll be miserable. That's the whole point. I was wondering if there'd been any late post. No, Mr. Reynolds, nothing. Telephone calls, messages? And you've called my wife? Every half hour, Mr. Reynolds. Still no reply. Thank you. It's going to be a bit surprised when he finds this on his desk, isn't he? If you've never remembered his birthday before, I expect he will. Oh, no, I mean, there's no postmark or anything. He'll wonder how it got there. And if he starts asking questions, he can ask as many questions as he likes, Jeff. He's never going to work out how it got there, is he? No. The one thing we don't have to worry about is anyone working out the truth. Oh, thank goodness you're back. Are you all right? We're fine, Mrs. Murray. We got your shopping for you. I've been so worried about you. We said we'd be back at four. Yes, I know, but... Oh, you'd better come inside. Would you mind if we came back later, Mrs. Murray? Only there's something rather important that we have to do. We'll see you this evening, OK? Yes, but I wanted to... Oh, all right. I know, I know, I should have warned them. Well, there's no need to go on about it. Then... That's the whole point of a surprise party, isn't it? You think nobody cared, and then you find they've gone to all that trouble, and you feel even better because you felt so bad before. Yes, I'm sure you're right. Mm. Do you want any knives? Not knives, but if you've got any spoons, I could... Ah, there you are. Hi, Mum. You can forget about Oscar for a minute. We want to work with you two. We had Mrs Murray in here a little while ago. She told us she'd gone to the moon for the day. In the life pod from an Aurelian battle cruiser. She told you? Well, she was very worried you'd run out of air. How could you tell us something like that? What on earth do you think you were doing? You do realise she believed you. You have to promise not to tell her any more stories. Stick to the truth in future, OK? OK, we promise. Right, you can take Oscar, but I want you back at the house by six, no later. Why? What's happening? Never mind what's happening, just be there. OK. I haven't told them about the party. You know what boys are like. Pam, they can't keep a secret about anything. Right, let's get these in the car. How's Jack going to get there? Hmm? To the party, if he's still in France. Now, now that's the clever bit. I have a message from the chairman, Mr Reynolds. Your meeting has been cancelled. Cancelled? That meeting was the only reason I stayed. I could have gone home last night. I could have... Mr. Humboldt offers his sincere apologies and asks if you would fly to England with him. In his helicopter. Helicopter? When? Now. He's waiting for you on the roof. Oh. Oh. Could you... Don't worry, Mr. Reynolds. I will try and tell your wife.
Okay, now turn left at the Eiffel Tower. Whoa, whoa, the other left, Jack! Right. Now we have to find somewhere to park. Somebody else tried to park there. We really would be in trouble, Tom. Right. I think the lifts are through here. So what did you get him? What? Your dad. For his birthday. Oh, it's a bar of chocolate. That's it. Well, that's what I always get him. He's never complained. It's your dad's 40th and you're giving him a bar of chocolate. For goodness sake, Tom. I'm so serious about my dad's birthday. What? Are you quite sure he's not in? I told you, he's in a meeting. That's why he couldn't come home. Come on! It's a picture of you. What? He's got a picture of you on his desk. Because he asked Thomas what Dad's do. Now can we get out of here before... Mais qu'est-ce que vous faites ici? Nous avons un birthday present. Pour Monsieur Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds has gone to England. Has he? If you want him to receive this, you had better post it. Thank you. Out what's going on. What? The birthday cake on the table at your house. Mum says we have to be back by six. Dad's not here. It's a surprise birthday party, isn't it? Why didn't you tell us? We come all the way out here on a complete... What's the matter? Have you tried getting in your side yet? You'll have had one card, of course, from Jeff. Oh, he remembered this year. Tom reminds him. Good. Actually, he didn't just remind him, he took him out to buy the card, told him to get a present, and then worked out exactly when to post it so it would arrive in Paris on the right day. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it is, but... But what? Well, I couldn't help thinking that Tom wants Jeff to do the right thing for his dad, because in some ways he wishes he knew more about his own father. Tom hasn't got a father. Pam. Conrad went back to Australia when he was three, Sam. Tom doesn't even remember him. I know, but... He gets a card at Christmas and another one on his birthday, and that's it. They're strangers. What could Tom possibly want to know about him? 
wouldn't want to know if his father ever thinks about him or cares. Look, Sally, I know you're the one who's read all the psychology books, but you are way off on this one. Tom doesn't want to know anything about his father. He's got more important things to worry about. <laughs> Is there some way we can get back in? Three, well, you're even starting for the defence shield. It's going to be tricky, Tom. I know, but that thing is designed to withstand a direct thermonuclear blast. I had one idea. If it involves anything to do with the dog and the button, I'll tell you. It's not going to work. That is the dumbest animal. Look, I know there's no way we can break through the force field. But if you're already inside, you can reach out and pull something in, can't you? Like you did with the flag. Unfortunately, we're not inside, are we? We're out here. Yes, but... I think whatever your plan is, we'd better try it. OK, I need a distraction. Oh, good. Just for a couple of minutes. Fine. But I'd just like to remind you that this whole thing was entirely your idea. Allô, sécurité, nous avons ici un véhicule qui nous paraît un petit. Et toi là, viens ici It worked. I remember playing with this dog my granddad used to have. If he gave us something and tried to just do press it. the button, Tom. He's here, just paying the taxi outside. All oh, right. Cancelled the meeting. Oh, well. Good. Hello, Jack. Hi. Jeffrey, your father's home. Hi. Hi. Hi, Dad. Happy birthday. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Happy birthday. I sort of got it into my mind that I didn't have to think about that till tomorrow. Yes. Look, give me a coat. You go through to the sitting room and I'll make you a cup of tea or something. <laughs> Thank you. Got it. <laughs> you go on, you love the cake. You coming? Yeah, sure. you came. You can't imagine how worried I've been. Sorry we didn't get here yesterday, Mrs. Murray. It was Tom's fault. No, it wasn't. It was mine. Really? It was me who told them, you see. I'm the one who told your mothers about going to the moon and the quiver. Oh, that. I feel such a fool. I've ruined everything for you. No, it's all right, Mrs. Murray. They didn't believe you. They didn't? No. Why not? They think you're a bit funny. In the head. Well, quite a lot funny, really. 
But why? I think it's probably because you spend a lot of the day speaking to an Indian chief that no one else can see. Oh, that! <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a relief. <laughs> and talking of the chief, he left me a message for you at lunchtime. He said to tell you that it would be a very good idea to go and see your father. <sighs> Sorry, Mrs. M. I already have. No, the message isn't for you, Geoffrey. It's for Tom. That's it? I think so. Doesn't seem to be anyone in. No. I'll take a look around. You want me to come with you? No, it's OK. Mind if we went back via Bangkok? What? Only the King of Thailand's got this palace there called the Royal Palace. This isn't flags again, is it? It's just a hobby, Tom. It doesn't do anyone any harm. That's a lot more interesting than some rocks I've seen. It'll only be an extra five minutes. But if you want to wait here, you know, in case anyone turns up, I'll understand. Tom? I said if you want to wait here in case anyone turns up. No, it's okay. I've seen what I wanted.